Disclaimer. This podcast will mostly deal with the relationship between men. If you as a listener is comfortable with this subject matter, please sit back and enjoy the program. Welcome listeners to A Night of Wonder. This is the two-timer series, Collective. A collection of different genres created by D.B. Watson, writer of the two-timer series. In this program, you will hear a different tale once a week read by me, A.J. Carter. If you enjoy any of these stories, please show your support by ringing that bell, giving a thumbs up, and a follow. Thank you. Meeting Slave traders kidnapped Patrick from his homeland to be traded to a wealthy buyer who had eyed him selling his garden's harvest in the farmer's market. The buyer paid the traders a considerable amount to bring the 16-year-old to him. They kept the frightened boy in the ship's hold, feeding him only once a day. They made a stop at the shore near Japan for supplies. Patrick struggled to stay warm, having only the hay-covered floor as his bed and a tattered blanket to cover his thin frame. He listened to the movement above as he sat shivering. He rose and moved to the locked port window to see where he was when a face appeared. His long hair was as black as night, his skin as white as milk, and his dark, crescent eyes sent warmth and shivers throughout Patrick's body. Patrick stared, more in wonderment than in fright. The beautiful man rose one finger to Patrick, signaling him to wait. Patrick watched as the man vanished. He suddenly heard screaming and banging on the deck above. Patrick moved to the corner of the room, furthest away from the door, like he always did whenever the men came to feed or hurt him. He sat down on the hard floor, drawing his knees to his chest and covering his head, praying they'd leave food and not harm him. The hatch door opened with a bang and someone entered. Patrick never looked up as he listened to the footsteps draw closer, stopping near him. He heard nothing drop beside him, which was how they usually delivered his food. He shivered at the thought of the person wanting to inflict pain on him again. Out of nowhere and quite unexpectedly, he felt a hand on his head. It was gentle and warm as it stroked his hair. Patrick peeked up, and to his surprise, the man from the window was on a bent knee beside him. There's no need to be afraid anymore, the man said. I can take you away from all of this. Patrick raised his head, thinking he was dreaming or on the verge of passing out from the cold or lack of food. I'd like to take you home with me, the man said. Patrick realized the man's mouth wasn't moving, but his words were clear in his head. How are you speaking to me? I'm using my mind. One day, you'll be able to do the same. Patrick lowered his arms and looked at the splendor of the man's hair, face, and clothes that were nothing like his. I'm nothing compared to you. Don't speak of such things. You are as valued as any just man. So, would you like to come home with me? I would. That was all Patrick could say before the man told him to go to sleep. He carried the unconscious Patrick to the top deck where the men who had stolen him lay dismembered, some in pools of their own blood, others drained of it. The man looked over his handiwork before gravitating off the ship and disappearing into the night. Patrick learned his guardian, Yuri Jin, was a wealthy lord who owned land and several homes. Since Patrick was an outsider, he had to remain in a private apartment during the day. Yuri had it decorated to his liking, so he was quite comfortable. But at night, he could go into the garden and meet Yuri by his private lake. Yuri was Patrick's only friend, which was fine with him. He didn't care that he could only see the elite at night. Patrick would go on and on about what he did during the day, and Yuri would listen like a dutiful friend, asking questions to engage Patrick more. This went on for four years until Patrick turned 20 years old. While waiting by the lake that night, Patrick rehearsed what he was going to ask Yuri. He'd asked before, but Yuri always told him he was too young, or it was too dangerous, and to wait until he was older. Patrick loved being with Yuri, but he needed more from their relationship. Whenever he asked what their relationship was, Yuri would say that he loved him, which confused Patrick, until Yuri kissed him on the mouth. Patrick accepted his answer for a whole year. Now he'd ask again what he considered his birthday, the date Yuri found him. Yuri might say the same thing and kiss him again, but Patrick decided that wasn't enough. You're in deep thought, Yuri said suddenly beside him. 
Patrick had become used to Yuri's sudden appearances and only smiled at him. You know what I'm going to ask you? I do. I need more, Yuri. Now that you're of age, I can give you more. I had hoped, but Yuri cut Patrick short when he grabbed him and sank his fangs into Patrick's neck. Patrick became paralyzed by the invasion. He shivered from the blood drained from his body. Yuri held him tight as he drank Patrick's sweet, fragrant blood. How the monster in him wanted to feel Patrick's heart slow to a soft hum when Yuri pulled back from his urges and broke free. Patrick went limp in his arms. He licked the blood from his lips and teeth before looking down at his weak love. Patrick, he whispered in his head, you are on the brink of death. If I leave you like this, you will surely die. But if you accept my gift, you will be forever young and by my side forever. I need your answer. Patrick's eyelids fluttered open and stared back at Yuri's exposed fangs and red irises. He wanted to reach out and touch Yuri's face but couldn't move as his head spun. He closed his eyes and replied to his thoughts. Yes. His once dry lips felt something wet and he smelled a sweet aroma. He tasted his lips and a driving hunger erupted inside him. Yuri placed the tasty meal closer to his mouth and was allowed to suck in the most delicious meal he had ever tasted. He clamped onto the source and took in globs until he heard Yuri's voice telling him to stop. It took every ounce of Patrick's strength to stop himself, but Yuri still had to free the wrist he slit to feed his protege. Patrick stepped into a world of amazement, but also terror. In his first year, Yuri had to collect victims for Patrick, who was too frightened to hunt. Yuri was patient and understanding and followed Patrick's cues. When Patrick made his first kill, which was a drifter who murdered a little girl, he suddenly felt liberated and wanted to hunt on his own after that. He and Yuri consummated their love and slept in the same crypt. Years passed and Yuri always celebrated Patrick's day of birth in the same spot he gifted him, except for one night. Patrick waited the whole night and Yuri never came. The next evening, Patrick awoke to find Yuri holding someone else. He demanded to know who he was. He was lost, like you, so I wanted to save him. You gave him the gift and brought him here to our tomb? He needs guidance, like I gave you. How long did you wait before biting him? He was already of age. So you're going to fuck him as well? That hasn't been decided. What? Patrick... Yuri said, touching his cheek. He's a part of our family. You shouldn't be jealous. Patrick pushed his hand away and then glanced at the nervous youth, who had blonde locks and bore a strange resemblance to him. He's my replacement, isn't he? Patrick, no, I never. But you will allow him to sleep in your arms? He's frightened, just like you were. I have no say. If you mean whether he stays or goes, no. Then have at it. Patrick sped off, taking flight, and never looked back. He ignored Yuri's calls to him to return and kept going until Yuri's voice died out. Thank you for listening. This was a short story by D.B. Watson and read by me, A.J. Carter. If you want to hear more of the story, please leave a comment. You can find the Thriller series at Amazon.com under D.B. Watson slash Two-Timer Series on audio at Audible.com and Kindle Villa. If you would like to hire me, A.J. Carter, to narrate your project, you can find me on ACX.com slash A.J. Carter. Thank you, and see you next week.